The 309th AMAR stores the world's largest collection of military aircraft here in the Arizona desert. I like to call this the ugliest plane out here, the YC-14. It was an aircraft that never went into production. 800 mechanics work nonstop, reclaiming critical parts and regenerating aircraft so they can go back into service. I can't just pull over an airplane like you can a car, and we have to make sure that these aircraft are safe to fly. Our goal is not to be like a cemetery for the aircraft. That's Colonel Barnard. She's served 25 years as a U.S. Air Force aircraft maintenance officer. As a commander here, I am in charge of the whole operation. The assets stored here are worth somewhere between 34 and $35 billion if you were to try to replace them all. <laughs> it's a big number. <laughs> she took us inside this massive facility to see how these military planes get a second chance at life. AMAR got its start back in 1946. After World War II, the Army needed a place to store old planes. They chose davis monthan Air Force Base, here in Tucson. With nearly 2,000 football fields worth of open desert, there was plenty of space. We're known worldwide as the Boneyard. Our guys take pride in being Boneyard Wranglers. Arizona has the perfect weather for storing these assets. It's hot, there's little rainfall, no humidity, and the soil? It's as hard as concrete. So planes won't sink. The dryness as well as the lack of acidity in the soil prevent corrosion on the assets. Aircraft come here from the Department of Defense, military, other government agencies, and foreign allies. We have about 3,100 airplanes. The planes are mostly military. They come from the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, and the Marines. We have over 80 different types of airplanes here. Planes and helicopters arrive and are lined up in sections. So we're driving down display row here, or celebrity row as some people call it. We do have a sense of humor here. That's our stealth aircraft, which is actually just Wonder Woman's jet. The LC-130s have skis along with their landing gear so they can land down in Antarctica and support the National Science Foundation all across that continent. We're coming up on a NASA aircraft. It's affectionately called the Vomit Comet. Some aircraft will be here for weeks before they're called back into service. Other aircraft can be here for 50 years, similar to this A4 Skyhawk. Each plane goes through a preservation process before it's put in the desert. Those that may fly again are re-preserved every four years. They're defueled, then oil is pumped through the engine to preserve it. The black material that we have on here is the base layer that seals up the aircraft. And then later, as you can see the rest of the aircraft around here, the coats on top are white, and those white coats will reflect the heat, so it better preserves the assets all on the inside of the aircraft. Like the inside of the C-5A Galaxy, Inside of the C-5, it's the largest cargo aircraft in the Air Force inventory. I have deployed on these. One of six deployments Colonel Barnard's had to Afghanistan, New Zealand, and Antarctica. And we can fit three HH-60 helicopters and a lot of our equipment that we need, as well as all our maintainers. We have just over 60 of them here. And every one of them needs 72 tie-downs. Airplanes are designed to fly, and when it gets a little breezy out here, we want to make sure they stay parked. But not every plane just sits around collecting dust. U.S. military units around the world can request specific parts off these planes. An aircraft has so many thousands of parts. Just like a reservoir keeps things in case you need them, and then we release what's out of the reservoir as needed. And some of the parts the military can only find here at AMARG. We are that assurance that there's a part available when the supply system main sources don't get it. We send anywhere from 4,000 to 7,000 parts out every year to the tune of a few million dollars each week worth of supply parts. Scott and James here are removing the engines from the back of this T-38 as a reclamation effort because these have been requested to go back into service. So once the crews reclaim the parts out in the desert and bring them into the end of this building, they get washed, they get non-destructive inspection, and they're going to pack and ship these right out the door as fast as we can. But sometimes, instead of being used for parts, an entire plane will be regenerated, meaning they'll pull it out of the desert and wash it down. We have to remove all the coatings that are used to preserve the aircraft out in the desert. After getting a nice shower, it's fixed up. What our team is working on here is a C-130 that's be regenerated for foreign military sales. In this hangar, the current project that we're working on is F-16s and post-black repair. It's a package of structural improvements on the aircraft to extend their flyable life. The unit also handles aircraft modifications. These aircraft come from U.S. units that are active right now, and then they get some work done on them, and they go back out to that same unit. We're able to upgrade those and modify them to keep them up with the current standards in the active fleet. Complicated individual pieces are sent to separate back shops for repair and overhaul. Here in the wing shop, 
We have all the center portions of the A-10 wings being rebuilt here and the outer portions being re rebuilt there. There's actually hundreds of pieces inside of an aircraft wing. The complexity and the level of structure, it's really eye-opening for many folks. Each set of wings can take up to 20,000 man hours to overhaul. Once parts are fixed, they go through a thorough inspection. We're here in the non-destructive inspection area. Pete's working on a fluorescent dye penetrant. It's basically a, a liquid that absorbs into cracks, and we can apply a black light to it, and you can see there is a crack right here that shows up. This crack right here on this part in the landing gear could cause catastrophic failure on the landing gear. Not a single crack on an entire plane can get past this team. We have to make sure that these aircraft are safe to fly so that we protect that asset and we protect the air crew that's inside of that asset. So the stakes are pretty high. Once fixed, the planes go through a rigorous final flight test. Pilot Scott Thompson is testing these regenerated F-16s. I will take them out to the airspace just south of here, close enough to where if I do have a problem, I can get back onto the ground immediately and pretty much put them through the ringer. We test flight controls and the handling and the injured performance and all the systems on the plane pretty extensively at all altitudes. They go out to become full-scale aerial targets. That's a happy ending for a plane pulled from the desert here at AMARG. But for other aircraft, this is the end of the line. The planes marked with a big D go through pre-demilitarization and then are destroyed by a third-party contractor. So these are our guys that work the demil and they prepare aircraft for disposal. Well, and I will get out of the way of the crowbar. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty good at destruction too, but you guys are being super careful about it, which yeah, you should be. Yeah. The planes are demolished for good reason. To make sure everything's accounted for and that the materials and the technology don't fall into the wrong hands. While some Americans may not have heard of AMARG, it actually saves taxpayers a lot of money. The assets stored here are worth somewhere between 34 and $35 billion. And so to make a new one may not be possible versus to rejuvenate an old one might be the best case scenario. But for the workers, it's not just about saving the military some money. It's also about giving these planes another life. A lot of these airplanes haven't flown for a very long time. I flew a lot of them operationally back in the day. It's great to get back in them and, and bring them back to life. These airplanes have a lot of stories to tell, and it's wonderful to spend time with them and think about that. There are very few of us military that are lucky enough to be assigned here. It's just a joy to be able to work with these people every day and be around these airplanes.